What's up, it's Jared from Vanalytica Vlogs and today I recorded the start of this video in 4K and then my camera shut off because it couldn't handle it and it heated up and now I'm starting all over again. So anyway, today's the 1st of April, April Fool's Day and if you're living in Victoria and Australia and you're a gun shop owner, you're feeling like a bit of a fool because yesterday the Victorian Police Minister, Lisa Neville, basically shut down gun stores in Victoria and she put out a little video uh, outlining the reasoning behind it and it's hilarious slash absolutely terrible so we're gonna watch this video and we are going to have a look at some reasons why I think this is today announcing the arrangements in relation to um, a decision of National Cabinet uh, to put a temporary ban on additional access to firearms and ammunition for sporting and recreational fire firearm users. Uh, this is um, a decision that uh, you know will have an impact but is also about keeping our community safe. We know with the current arrangements, we don't want people out doing uh, these activities anyway. Um, but we've also seen in the last week, particularly a doubling of um, attempts to access um, firearms category A and B and also of ammunition. So uh, we are concerned by those figures and we're also concerned about this is an incredibly stressful time um, for people. And uh, we know that there are pressures around family violence uh, and also around work and people spending a lot of time together. We're also concerned about making sure we don't have additional firearms and ammunition in our community that criminals may also access, particularly in times where um, you know, there are other um, mechanisms, particularly importations of firearms that are much more difficult in the current environment. So we don't want to make, make that easier. Now this applies to recreational um, and shooting um, shoot for rec sport and recreation. Today, Junior! National uses of firearms. It does not impact on um, primary producers or those who need it, like security guards, prison guards, for example. Uh, I'll get, Shane will take you through a little bit more detail around that, but that um, notice has gone out as at 8 o'clock this morning, uh, so this takes immediate effect. Cool, 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 cool. So, I normally freestyle my videos, meaning that I just bleh, say a bunch of stuff. Um, but I actually took some notes because uh, I wanted to kind of... I didn't want to make this too long. Um, and I also wanted to kind of like stick to the relevant points. So I'm sticking to the points that she made. I'm not going beyond what she said, okay? So, she's saying that it's... It's worrying that um, there's been a doubling in the uh, attempts to acquire or attempts to access, attempts to access is the term she uses, uh, firearms and ammunition. Now we're in the middle of a global economic sitch right now um, that has seen a lot of places uh, shut their doors. Uh, manufacturers you know that kind of thing so when a resource or a product um, is unable to continue to be made manufactured whatever or even supplied at this point then you start talking about scarcity and when you've got all, a bunch of people sitting around at home who kind of maybe always wanted to um, get a rifle, shotgun, good luck getting a handgun, prayers. But if the, there's somebody out there and they're like, well, this is the time that I need to do it because I feel like maybe I won't get the chance to again. That's not a bad thing. I don't, I don't see why people getting into firearms is on the face of it a bad thing so don't worry about that also she mentioned keeping community safe and that's on the in the premise of um, 
firearms are unsafe, so if you have firearms or other firearms in a house, you're immediately less safe than you would be otherwise. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense at all. If the person who if the person who possesses the firearms, uh, you know, are a proper person in that they um, understand, respect the firearm, perfectly safe. Perfectly safe. Um, then she says, this is one that I kind of, I mean, a lot of people that I follow on Twitter um, have mentioned it and I kind of, I feel the same way. When she talks about these three things, uh, stress, family violence, and people being in close quarters, as in being confined to your house or that kind of thing. By the way, this is all self-isolation. No, nobody's getting arrested for leaving their house. It's ridiculous. So, basically she's saying that these people are a ticking time bomb of social frustration because they're being made to stay in their house with their families. This is inevitably, inevitably going to lead to um, an escalation of the, uh, domestic violence in the country and killings by by firearm because that's a reasonable and rational thing to say about a community um i think that's really irresponsible <laughs> to say a, like a thing to put out there but it kind of gives you an idea about how the anti-gun kind of um views are in australia that there's there's an inherent danger to the people. Um, yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> actually, in keeping uh, with the, the theme of keeping communities safe, she says that, um, uh, you know, in terms of like, um, the more people purchase the more firearms and ammunition are out in the streets, so to speak, you know, they're out in circulation, then there's more chance that criminals will get a hold of them. And then crime. Okay. That's ridiculous. I've got I've got a real answer and then I've got a real but a little bit sarcastic answer. The real answer is uh, laws don't stop criminals. So regardless of the, this law now, the NFA um, after Port Arthur, anything you do, any restrictions you make on firearms doesn't matter. Criminals don't care. They are, by their very definition, flouting your awesome magical laws. Like, they do not care. My second, kind of honest, but still a little bit smart assy kind of <laughs> answer to this is, wouldn't it be better for the populace to go and buy this? I'm not talking about people forced to go and buy firearms because that's stupid. If you're too scared to engage with something like that, then it might be better that you don't or get some training and whatever. But wouldn't it be better for people who wanted to purchase these firearms and ammunition to go and do so and thereby spread out the ammunition and firearms across your state rather than one centralized place which you yourself have forced to close making it basically just there for the picking you think about that one or did you just say it was illegal to rob businesses who are forced to close so then criminals won't do it what a goose um, yeah, it, the thing that really gets me is that I don't understand how this is relevant 
to what's going on with the sitch. Like, it's just like, ooh, it's a good idea. I've been wanting to do this for a while. Everybody's scared of everybody else. Let's do it now while everybody's cool about it. But I mean, it's Australia because everybody's mostly cool about it anyway. Gross. Anyway, wherever you are, I hope you're keeping safe. I hope your families are safe. Um, remember to just do the right thing. Do the right thing. If you ta touch your hands and face, touch your hand. <laughs> if you touch your hands to your face, eyes, nose, whatever, sanitize them. You won't see me doing that because I basically live by myself, so <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Trust me, I work in a hospital now. I am 33% hand sanitizer at the moment. It's ridiculous. Uh, speaking of which, this is probably my last week of work, so I might actually start making videos again. About what? I don't know. <laughs> uh, playing chicken with the cops outside and see if I can get out of my house for 25 seconds before I get... Like an arrested or shot. Ugh. Anyway, God bless. Look after each other and yourselves. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.